Hello everyone and welcome to the downtown east side heart of the city festival. My name is Terry Hunter and I'm the executive director of Vancouver Moving Theater and the artistic producer of the downtown east side heart of the city festival. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to this uh, wonderful talk that we're going to have about this mural and um, to welcome you to the Fire Hall Art Center where we are recording this um, for the Heart of the City Festival. And it's my pleasure to be here with Richard Tetralt, uh, who is the painter of this mural. And Richard is a really well-known and much beloved uh, visual artist, muralist, community engaged artist who lives and works uh, in the downtown east side and Strathcona, and I've known Richard since the 1970s. We've done a lot of stuff together over the years, mm -hmm. and um, we're going to talk about this mural and um, and give you some insight into this. And uh, one of the reasons we wanted to do this today is because the theme of this year's festival is this gives us strength, and these people in this mural are people that give us strength. Community gives us gives us strength. Richard, let's talk a little bit about the background and how we came to do this and your overall concept of how we put this painting together or how you put it together. I think the idea was uh, to use several uh, strips of canvas, making it a triptych, mm -hmm. obviously, and um, partly for the ease of installation, uh, but also for my ability to fit it in my studio and see what I was working on. Uh, so I also love the idea of triptychs and the strength of them. The end panels, the red panels, were added afterwards to kind of frame it all in, just as an abstract element, mm -hmm. um, and to give it a real focus. So uh, and yeah. I would just add too that this was designed to go on the wall, the south wall at the Carnegie Community Center. So that was um, mm -hmm. that frame of that wall determined the size of this piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And of course, you know, some of the figures end up being larger than life size and then mm -hmm. others as it recedes in perspective, more like life size. But, mm -hmm. you know, like a, any mural, it has to be big to, and dramatic to have effect. Yeah, it certainly has that. Mm -hmm. So how did you create the dramaticness in the mural? You know, usually I like starting with some sort of abstract uh, background element, just geometry that the figures fit within. So. Uh -huh. It's the organic nature of figures against uh, abstract geometry. And so these kind of diagonals and such just kind of define the space and link to, together the different elements of the triptych. Yeah, and there's some depth to it too. I mean, there, I, there's a sense of layers that go in, into this, so it's not, it doesn't yes. have a two-dimensional feel yeah. to it. Yeah, I mean, it's not literally rendering them in a, a space because it's a more of an abstract idea yeah. that these are figures from different times yes. as well. So there's a kind of a, a sense of a chronology also. I think actually one of the, just to point this out, one of my inspirations for it and why I like what you had proposed, Terry, is that um, there's a mural done by Diego Rivera that, that encapsulates all the historic events that happened in a park in Mexico City mm -hmm. called Alameda. And uh, that kind of like dream element of all these figures historically coming together up to the present in one piece was pretty, was kind of a, you know, seminal uh, yeah, inspiration. Yeah, and I certainly get that from this, from this image with the flow of how the characters move. And it's almost like a river or a a river of people and, you, and, and a sense of time. And, and also, some of the figures in here you, you made uh, a little bit more mythical. You know, there's, a, uh, there's kind of a larger than life, like this one of Delana, for example. Right. Um, it, that's clearly Delana, but it's also, it's also you've yes. pushed it a little bit, so she's kind of got a mythical figure or myth, mythical aspect about her. Can mm -hmm. you talk about that? Because we see that a lot in your work, where you take an individual and you, and you push it and make them mythical-like. Well, yeah, I, I mean, some of the gestures that I found really uh, symbolize, you know, kind of community and strength mm -hmm. and or resilience. And so that is underlining it, both these, these up, up reaching arms uh, give that sort of right. sense of elevation and empowerment. Right. So I never noticed that before with the different figures with their arms yeah. up. And even to the expression of Sam in the, you know, sort of in the middle here, yeah. uh, in a way he kind of becomes a focal point of the whole piece to me right. because he's like looking off into some something to the future. So, I, you know, I see him as being kind of like this wise 
person looking at uh, the he computer. was definitely a wise person definitely yes. and and also color you've the, the color in the in the is really vibrant and and you talk a bit about that and how you came about the color scheme yeah uh actually yeah a lot of the background colors are not exactly primary colors they're more like secondary colors and then the figures are have more elements of pure red, pure blue, mm -hmm. and also it pulls them forward. Right. It's kind of like just a, it's a way of just um, developing uh, integration with space and a, and a dynamic. Right. <clears throat> uh, so that so that you know these bright primary colors really pull the composition forward. Yeah, and it looks really stunning when it's in the Carnegie Community Center and all the people in the community are sitting down having a big feast, and this is. This is all there. Um, these photos, these images were gathered from photos that we had um, in our archives from the Heart of the City Festival. And um, many of the people in, in here, have, uh, we've, you know, dear ones that we've lost, but uh, there's mm -hmm. also a number of people in here that are still with us. And um, so maybe we should go through some of these people. You know, sure. we talked about the theme of the festival this year is this gives us strength. And I mentioned earlier that that it's the people of this community that give us strength. Mm -hmm. And um, and so when we went through it, we were looking for individuals from the community that had made and are making significant contributions and really come with their own strength. And I, before we get into it, maybe, um, Richard, we should talk a little bit about the um, diversity within the, within the mural too, because mm -hmm. we really wanted to capture different, the different dif uh, cultural elements, the art forms, yeah. um, the mm -hmm. different people. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Um, um, uh, there's certainly indigenous, black, etc. So we're trying you know, to get a cross yeah. selection of the neighborhood. It's difficult to get, you know, a cross section that doesn't look artificial. Right. Uh, it feels natural, but that also touches on all the bases that, mm -hmm. you know, that make up the community, the creative community mm -hmm. in the downtown east side. <clears throat> so it really is kind of like choosing you know, many from a whole stream of creative people. Yeah. As we know, it was much it was, broader than it was a hard much choice. broader than this number of people. <laughs> but each has to stand as a kind of a symbol for uh, for for the the, the um, disciplines and the different art mm -hmm. forms that they represent. I mean, for example, you know, a writer, Sandy Cameron mm -hmm. and and obviously Bud Osborne as well, both writers, poets, activists, yep. very engaged in the community. Yep. Hi highly you know, um, defiant of uh, a lot of the um, issues that were going on around uh, lack of uh, drug resources, for example. Uh, but as we know, was uh, uh, spearheaded, um, you know, the, the um, uh, drug centers that uh, help people get off, get uh, some of the dangerous drugs off the street and yeah. keep people alive. And so he was an activist from from arriving in Vancouver and um, became a became a poet presence in almost all of this really key huge issues and street protests that yeah. were happening in the downtown east side through the 90s into the thousands yeah right? and what's amazing about these two gentlemen um, is that they they um, they were very much activists and politically engaged and they used um, uh, writing arts as a means to um, share their stories and to um, raise awareness and so that connection between um, social justice and um, arts and culture was very strong in these two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so they're you know in a way representing the writing community that I know is really <coughs> you know very vital and very uh, active. There's a little uh, tribute to the Carnegie newsletter mm -hmm. here just with the lettering. Another uh, really really important uh, uh, writing um, platform in the community. Mm -hmm. And above is uh, Diane Wood, mm -hmm. who's a painter and uh, did one of the backdrops as well for yeah. part of the city festival. And she's also a poet too, so she does a lot. Right. She's very, very active in the community, and she'll be featured in the. Uh, we're hoping to have her in the downtown east side showcase also, mm -hmm. but she runs the poetry night at the Carnegie, and she's really, really active in the community. Major, um, major player. And up above uh, Diane, we have Takeo Yamashiro, uh, who lives in Strathcona. Um, he's a master shakuhachi player. Um, he's probably in his 70s now, and uh, he mm. was involved in the establishment of Tanari Gumi, the seniors um, service organization that right. was initially down on Powell Street and has moved up 
into South Vancouver now. Um, incredible uh, yeah. musician. Yeah. And um, one of the things about the festival is that we, we show all the art forms right from students and lovers of the arts to um, cultural treasures and masters. And Takeo definitely falls on the, on the master <laughs> end of the spectrum. <laughs> He's and there's, quite some, there's something about having the sound of a shakuhachi on Hastings Street. I remember when we did a launch of uh, uh, Walls of Change, which is a big mural project, uh, six-month project down Hastings Street, and he performed at uh, Pigeon Park, oh my. along with Bud Osborne reading and uh, oh several my. other amazing performances. Um, that, but the sound of a shakuhachi was a really wow. profound. That must have been in amazing. That, that must have been amazing. Mm -hmm. And above. Uh, uh, Takeo, the dancer, is a uh, Montana hunter. Um, he's my son. And um, he is with, or was with, uh, the Ukraine Hall um, in Strathcona. And the Ukraine Hall is uh, definitely a major uh, player within the community, especially in Strathcona. Um, they've been here since the 1920s. And um, they have very strong social justice roots. And um, they're the legendary hospital for the uh, men that were attacked in the uh, postal strike in um, the 1930s, the late 1920s, I can't remember. And they also served as the home base for the Onda Ottawa March too, so mm -hmm. very strong activists. And they have a very, very strong cultural program, including the Dove Bush Dancers, award-winning Dove Bush Dancers. So that's our tribute to um, the Ukrainian Hall and the uh, cultural traditions of that neighborhood. And then we have uh, the drummer is Sawagi Taiko. Um, mm -hmm. I can talk about a, them a bit. Uh, yeah. Taiko started in Canada in our neighborhood. Very proud of that. And uh, out of the Powell Street Festival, definitely influenced by Taiko that was coming out of San Francisco and, and San Jose down in California. And um, there's a lot of Taiko groups in Vancouver. And um, uh, we're very proud to have um, these groups here, and Sawagi Taiko is one of them, and they've been at the festival a number of times, and Sawagi Taiko is an all-female um, Taiko group, and they really are very powerful and bring a lot of strength to the community. In the middle, we have uh, Mona Woodwards. Um, she was, at the time, uh, the executive director of the Vancouver f uh, front, um, front Door, uh, in, uh, in Aboriginal front door on Maine and mm -hmm. Hastings, right. and um, and so I I really love the placement of that um, that piece in the middle of the mural. Um, there's something about her and the stance and the feather mm -hmm. um, that really centers this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a common theme for you, and I see in your paintings is people holding up feathers. In fact, I have yeah. one in my living room because I love it well, so I much. Well, I mean, because it's symbolic, right? And it has a, has a kind, of, kind of casts a whole other um, mood and spirit to the, to the piece. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she's also like, you know, uh, in, uh, decorated with uh, bird images and, and uh, symbols of uh, flight and uplifting. The idea is that it would be uplifting. Uh -huh. I think that was the idea of the whole mural, really. But yeah. yeah. I didn't make that association before between the uplifting flight and the, and the, and the birds that are around her. That's a beautiful connection. And then above um, Mona, we have Sam Snobelin, our dear Sam Snobelin. He passed mm -hmm. away a number of years ago. And he was a very, very active uh, volunteer at the Carnegie Community Center, and he was very involved with Access TV and um, uh, very much beloved. He was there for decades, um, and we sadly lost Sam uh, a couple of years ago. He was probably one of the first people to walk through the doors when Carnegie opened uh, in, in the eight, early 80s. I, I was teaching a drawing class at Carnegie, and uh -huh. he was always a willing model, so yeah. I'd get people from the center to model for my class, portrait class, uh -huh. and Sam would always say, yeah, I got time, I'll sit for half awesome. an hour. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and the last project, that we, well, last project we did with Sam was a showcase that we put together and broadcast on TV, and he was the host for that. Right. Down here we have Isabel Ramirez um, from the Latino community, and uh, a poet and uh, writer, and she was very active in the community, especially supporting the Latino community. Mm -hmm. And she did a lot of work with Diane Wood, um, a lot of work on Day of the Dead celebrations in the community, very much beloved and, and sadly missed now. Over here we have Ricky Lavalley, um, a regular at the Carnegie. 
um, another beloved figure um, that we've lost, and he was very, very active in the um, music community at the Carnegie, and mm -hmm. um, he loved to um, do jig music and, and yeah. play really upbeat kind of yeah. country folk songs, mm -hmm. and uh, he was m very much loved and uh, very much missed. Up above, we have uh, Delana Gail Bowen, who I'm um, very gladly is still here with us. Yeah. And um, Delana is uh, an award-winning um, blues singer. She's in the American Blues Hall of Fame. And um, sh she has two shows this year at the Heart of the City Festival. And she's an extraordinary singer and another uh, very active um, uh, individual fighting for social justice in our community. Mm -hmm. And next to Delana, um, we have the, again, <laughs> everyone in this poster is beloved. <laughs> I overuse that word. Um, Thelma Gibson, who was born and raised in, in the East End, and she's still alive. She's in her late 80s now. And um, she was part of the famous um, Gibson family, um, triple threat artists, singers, dancers, and um, musicians. And she and her brother were involved in the 1950s in a show called Bambula, which was the first um, CBC musical produced here in Vancouver by CBC. It was quite a very breakthrough kind of production that happened. And Vancouver Moving Theatre had the honor to work with uh, Delana and her family and put together a show called East End Blues and all that jazz, which paid tribute to the black community and their contributions to the life and history of our neighborhood. And... Here we have a mother and her child. Uh, they're from the Git Hayek dancers. Um, Mike and Mickey Aldangeli are the leaders. They've since moved up to the north. But for many years, they were here in the community doing uh, wonderful work um, and, and building uh, cultural practice and, um, and cultural resilience or you know, community resilience through um, cultural participation. Um, what else we got here? Um, this, um, I can, get, can you see the... Am I in the way here? Over here we have a woman from the Missing and Memorial March, which is um, paying tribute to um, the women that we've lost in the community. And uh, so we thought that yeah, was that a was really- one from one of my drawings from the march. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately I didn't get her name. Yeah. But uh, if anybody can identify her. Yeah, um, yeah, if anyone knows who but, she is. Uh, yeah, I just like the, like the presence of the, of the drum coming in as well, mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, entering into the scene. Yeah. And here we have uh, Kusha. Um, she's uh, an extraordinary um, musician, um, been here in Vancouver for a couple of decades now. And, sh and she and her partner have been at the festival a number of times. Mm -hmm. And so she's here represent, not representing, but reflecting the Chinese heritage of the community. A very wonderful woman and extraordinary mm -hmm. uh, musician, very, very talented. Yeah. And finally up above, we have Randy Morrison from the Carnegie Jazz Band, which is, um, a feature, not a feature, but a very significant part of the music program at the Carnegie run by um, Brad Muirhead, and which I'm proud to say I'm a member of that, um, of that jazz band. And um, it's really a wonderful program. And if you want to get involved in the jazz, well, you can't do it now <laughs> because we're under COVID. But um, when it opens up, it is open to uh, musicians who are interested in doing jazz. Do we get everyone in the I in think the poster? So. Is there anything else that you wanted to say, Richard, about this that we may have missed? Mm, no, I, I think that, uh, oh yeah, that John Greenway did help with the, the layout of, of it initially. So it was really just a compilation, almost like a collage of photographs that I, I worked from and uh, developed it up from there. A little bit of a profile of some buildings at the top, running across the top, but kind of didn't want it to interfere too much with the presence of the humans in the mural. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, kept that very simple. Yeah, so um, that's a little bit of a walking tour through the Heart of the City Festival, and I, uh, sorry, through the mural, and I just wanted to take this moment to thank Richard. Um, Richard's been an extraordinary presence, extraordinary artist in our community, and uh, I, for one, am very grateful for his friendship, um, his collegial relationship, and the incredible uh, work that he's been doing um, or in the community for the last 40, 50 years 
It's amazing that um, I'm seeing those kind of numbers. <laughs> but okay. um, thank you, decades, Richard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Richard, for putting together this incredible mural. And we are talking about wanting to expand it and add some more people. Um, hopefully, someday within the next couple of years, we'll be able to do that. So, yes, thank you. You're thank very you, Richard. welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. And, and I look forward to doing another edition. Okay, so it's confirmed. Do it. Deal done. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tour of the mural, and uh, we'll see you at the Heart of the City Festival. Thank you very much, and have a great day.